three quarters of the old cowboys of the old west were saved, washed in the blood, believers. Learn to read and write from their Bibles. Learn to live from their Bibles. We wouldn't be the nation we are today without the cowboys of the old west. Can you say amen? Well, Hollywood is still shooting westerns. And pickup trucks are still hauling hay. They're still raising the bar at the PBR. And there's thousands in the PRCA. You won't find him on the endangered species. He ain't protected anywhere that I know. And they're still making them as tough and as bronchy as they did when the road buffalo roamed. So Viva the Cowboy. Long live his kind. Here's to the ranchers and the wranglers and the rodeo hands and all the generations standing in line. They can roll with the punches. Hey, they can weather the change. So Viva the Cowboy. He's still got a home on the range. <laughs> now, if you read your Bible, you'll find that when Jesus comes back, He's coming riding on a white horse. And that same Bible will tell you that all of his saints are going to be riding with him on white horses. Not Cadillacs, not Rolls Royce, but that cowboy church in the sky. Amen. Listen to this verse. Now, cowboy church is where you can find him with his family on any Sunday. Giving his God all the glory And teaching his children to pray He still trusts in Jesus And makes plans for eternity Where he'll live forever on that home on the range And with Jesus he never will change So viva la cowboy Long live his kind Here's to the preachers and the singers and the guitar players and all the little wranglers standing in line. They can roll with the punches. Hey, they can weather the change. So viva the cowboy. He's got a home on that heavenly range. Yeah, viva the cowboy. He's got a home on that heavenly range. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Come on back, brother. Bless us some more. Hope you'll be with us in the morning. What time is service in the morning, Pastor? 10.30 in the morning. 10.30. And we'll be doing music and a message in the morning. It'll be our last service here. Hope you'll tell your friends and family you'll join us in the morning. Be covering a lot of ground in the morning, so hope you'll make it. Just want to give you a biblical thought to take home with you tonight. I was thinking this week about the services here and some of the things that we've noticed in the lives of many professing Christians. <clears throat> many professing Christians today do not have the joy of the Lord. And I uh, just want to give you some thoughts that might help you along the way. I learned years ago in evangelism that I don't like to preach at anybody. I like to share and like to help people. Because we're all in this thing together. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Nehemiah. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. What is your strength this evening? Many American Christians, their joy is in materialism. It's not in Christ. Many times professing Christians are so shallow. If their health's good and their family's good and they got a little money in the bank, you know, they got happiness. I want you to know that's okay, but the joy of the Lord is much deeper than that. What are you going to do when all those things are taken away from you? The Bible declares the joy of the Lord is your strength, and this is in context with the book of Nehemiah. Look in Nehemiah twelve forty three. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced for God had made them rejoice with great joy. Notice God made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced. 
so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Look how many times joy is in that one verse when they rebuilt the walls in Jerusalem. The whole family was praising the Lord and rejoicing. And, you know, I was kind of raised in a depressed family. My mom and dad came out of the depression. They never did have very much. And there was not a lot of happiness in my home growing up. So the Lord's had to teach me how to be joyful in Him. And uh, I can honestly tell you, I'm certainly, certainly not where I want to be, but I have tasted of the joy of the Lord. And once you taste of the joy of Jesus, you're never the same. I want to give you a little, little word study here. I'm not trying to be too technical with you. There's several words in the Hebrew language of Jesus. By the way, Jesus spoke Hebrew. Did you know that? That's missed in a lot of seminaries today, but he did speak Hebrew slash Aramaic. And one of the words for joy is simcha. Can you say that? Simcha. It means blissome, exceeding joy. Strong word in the Hebrew tongue. Not just happiness. Blissome, exceeding joy. I'll give you an example of that word. Look in Psalm 511. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Because thou defendest them, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. That verse has that particular word in it. Shout for joy, blissome, exceeding joy. Here's another word used for joy in the Hebrew tongue, teruah. Can you say that? Teruah means acclamation of joy, loud noise. Okay? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That's the word for joy in the original Bible, teruah. Do you ever get so happy in the Lord, you just praise the Lord? You know, sometimes driving down the road, I just get to looking up in the clouds and get to thinking about what Jesus has done for me, and I just get to shouting in the car, you know? I really do. Yeah, I just, if you don't have those moments when you just burst out with hallelujah, if you don't have those moments, I feel sorry for you. Another word for joy in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, is sason. Can you say that? Sason means cheerfulness, welcome. Here's the way it's used. is when David played on his harp. Can you imagine little David playing on his harp? In Bethlehem, every year when we go to Bethlehem, I really think about David and the sheep. We talk a lot about that. Look at this verse, Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Watch this now. To give you a little context, judgment was coming to Jerusalem. Habakkuk realized because of God being holy and just, Israel going into idolatry, that judgment had to come. He saw that God had to be vindicated. But look how he closed the little book. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Imagine. Watch this. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. If you don't have anything in this world, you can have joy in the Lord. Don't want to talk about myself, but my great-grandmother, I never saw either one of my grandmothers, but I saw both of my great-grandmothers. One of them was Cherokee Indian, and the other one lived in a little shack not too far from us, and she never had $50 in her life. She was a pitiful, bowed over, wore clothes out of the garbage can. But I, every time I was around my great-grandma Smith, she always had joy. And her joy came from Jesus. She helped raise my father and all of her kids on prayer. She'd go in the closet and pray all night long. And she never was sad. She never complained. She just had the joy of the Lord. That's what you need, my dear friend, is the joy of Jesus. Even when hard times come, you can have the joy. Here's another word used in the joy in the Hebrew, gul. Can you say that? Gul. To spin around with excitement. Really? Wow. Wow. I want to tell you something about Jesus. Jesus' first miracle was at a wedding. 
you may, may not have studied Hebrew culture, but weddings in Jesus' time lasted seven days. And it was very festive. Music, dancing. It's not recorded that Jesus danced, but I think he probably did. Jesus was a man of the people. And his first miracle was at a wedding. Don't forget that, okay? He was a man of sorrows thinking about the cross, but he was also a man of joy. And sometimes we forget this. John 15, 11, look what Jesus said in the upper room. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Jesus was a man of joy. And he wanted to leave his joy, and he did leave his joy to those disciples. And he wants to give it to you, my friend. So many people who love the Lord are so broken and so burdened down. Family trouble, financial trouble, health trouble. I want you to have the joy of Jesus. And I want you to know you can have it. I've been there, I know. Now stay with me. Try to, now this is just something I came up in my thoughts because I've been to Israel so many times. Can you imagine how Jesus felt when he saw the farmers sowing the seed in the field along the hills of Galilee? He designed the earth that it would grow forth the fields. Jesus designed the earth that you plant the seed and it would grow forth the barley and the wheat. The Bible says in Genesis 1, twice in one verse, a uh, fruit tree, the seed, is in itself. There's enough seed in one fruit to grow, to grow another tree. One of the great mysteries of creation. Jesus was a man of joy. Can you imagine him watching them plant and harvest their crops? It brought joy to him. Try to imagine Jesus when they caught the multitude of fish on the Sea of Galilee. Hey, folks, Jesus knew every fish in the Sea of Galilee. Can you imagine what? How, imagine Jesus looking at the expression on Peter and Andrew's face and James and John when they caught the multitude of fish. I, I have talked to many old fishermen in the Sea of Galilee over the years. They told me many, many stories about Israeli fishermen in biblical times. And it was a way of livelihood. It's a way of existence. And here comes a man and he has control over nature. 30 years old, but he has power over creation. Imagine the joy on the face of Jesus when they caught the multitude of fish. Wow. Think about Jesus walking along the shore of Galilee and the birds in the air and the flowers in the field. He talked about it in his sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus put them there. He loved his creation. We don't worship creation within itself, but you can see God's handiwork all around you. Do you ever look up in the sky? Do you ever see the birds and the flowers and start praising the Lord for all he's done? If you're not careful, you'll let life get so busy that you miss the little things. You know, Jesus enjoyed the little things. I've got to tell you this little quick story. Several years ago, Don and I got invited to be with the president. So they flew us to Washington, D.C. to be with the president. We come back to Mississippi. We thought, I thought my father, my father went to be with the Lord about 10, 12 years ago. And I thought my father would be really just elated and want to have questions about the president, you know. Pulled in our driveway, and my dad, you'd have to know my dad, real simple guy. He said, Carol said, I've cut one of the most beautiful paths in the woods of my lawnmower since y'all been gone. You ever saw it? I said, you did? He said, yes, yeah. I'll take you down there and show it to you. You want me to? And I went down there and rode on his little homemade cart behind his lawnmower, went through the woods where we lived, and Dad could tell you the name of every tree in the woods. And I got to looking at the flowers and the birds and I got to thinking, hey, I don't think I want to go back to Washington. But always remember this. You'll find the Lord God in the little things. Okay? Don't look for him in the big thing. You look for him in the little things. 
Look in John 16, 22. And you now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. The disciples would see the risen Christ, and that joy would remain in them, and that's how they would turn the world upside down for Jesus. They had a joy the world could not give them. If you ever taste of real joy, the things of the world taste pretty sour. And I feel so sorry for so many Christians. They're so carnal and so shallow that they're dibble-dabbling in the things of the world and they cannot enjoy the Lord. I feel sorry for people like that. You know, when we organized our evangelistic association back in the mid-'80s, and, and look, I'm nobody. I know how feeble I am. But I saw that the Lord was calling me into the ministry, and I've made a covenant with the Lord. If you'll bless me, Lord, you'll bless me with the ministry, I'll never turn it into merchandise for myself. And our, I had our ministry set up where I can't even write a check at our ministry. Hey, folks, we've got to have money to get by, but don't get hung up on money. Even the wicked can have money. Read your Bible. Read Psalm 73. Even lost people, wicked people can prosper. Put your joy in the Lord. If prosperity comes your way, use it for the good Lord. Jesus said those words in the upper room in Jerusalem, just a few hours away from the cross. Those disciples were heartbroken. They left everything to follow this preacher from Nazareth. They didn't understand that he had to die and rise again. But Jesus said, my joy is going to be in you, and it's going to remain in you, and the world's not going to take it away from you. And they gave their life for preaching the gospel. John 17, 13 now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus is praying to the Heavenly Father for the disciples and for you. Think about that. Did the Father answer his son's prayer? I pray that they'll have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus praying. One of the great chapters in the Bible is the 17th chapter of John, the high priestly prayer of Jesus. It's Seldom preached from, but it's one of the greatest in the Bible, where he prays for those that would trust in him. Wow. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, watch this, that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Have you ever thought about the cross being joy? He was a man of sorrow. But it brought joy because he knew he was going to make a way where we could be with him. It was the only way we could be with him. We don't understand that. But the justice of a holy God had to be satisfied. And the only way God's justice could be satisfied was for him to become a man, fulfill his own law, die for the sins of mankind. Now he can forgive the sinner and still be just. And it brought joy to the heart of Jesus to die for you. My friend, if there's only one sermon to preach and only one sermon only, it ought to be a message about the cross because that the ground is level at the cross. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you think you're a good person or you've been a bad person, the ground's level at the cross. Everybody has to come the same way. And I pray that you have been to the cross. Christ changed my life years ago, and he's still changing my life today. Look in Luke 24, 50 through 52. He led, them, he led them out as far as to Bethany. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. There's a big Jewish uh, background to this. I don't have time to get into tonight. Came to pass while he blessed them. He was parted from them and carried up into heaven. They worshiped him. Return to Jerusalem with what? They didn't go back to Jerusalem sad with their heads down. They knew Jesus had accomplished what the Father sent him to do. And when he ascended to heaven, they knew that they would see him again. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They knew that he was going to fill them with the power to take the gospel into the known world. They wouldn't sad saying, oh, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. No, 
and went back to Jerusalem with great joy. Romans 14, 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom, and the kingdom is within you. One day the kingdom will come physically on the earth, but now the kingdom is within you. Do you have that righteousness within you tonight? Do you have the peace and joy of the Holy Spirit tonight? Look at Matthew 25, 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to be required of me or you that we are uh, fabulous or famous uh, that we're more talented than anybody else if we're just faithful in what he's called us to do. There may be mothers that raised eight kids on a, on a pioneer farm out west years ago that was faithful to lead all of her kids to Jesus. That mother may be rewarded more than many preachers. There may be some preacher in some third world country that's given his life, that's preaching with no money, and giving his life and winning others to Jesus will be rewarded more than Billy Graham. It's those who have been faithful. I got a, a message the other day from a pastor in Nigeria who reads my commentaries. And he says, I don't have the money. Could you send me your books where I can know the Bible better? My church is, is growing and I don't have any help. Of course, we sent him some commentaries. He's teaching his, bio, those, his, his church, uh, not that we're much help, but he, there's some things in there that might can help him. And his church is growing, many people getting saved. And he emailed me the other day, he said he wants a group from his church to go to Israel next year with us. He says, I don't know how it's going to be made possible, but he said, I'm going to trust the Lord. You know how much the pastor makes a month? $200 a month and got a large church. He does it because the Lord called him and he does it simply because he loves the Lord. He loves Jesus. It's people like that that's going to be rewarded one day. Won't it be wonderful if the Lord looks at you one day and says, Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You think about it, my friend. You only have a few days on this earth. Time's passing us up. Look in Psalm 16, 11. Thou will show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. Wow. At thy right, right hand are pleasures forevermore. If we only knew the joy that was waiting us in heaven, we would not worry the way that we do. You know, we talk about what heaven's going to look like. It wouldn't matter to me. As long as I'm in the presence of Christ, that will be joy. That will be joy. Jesus came to this earth not only to die for our sins, but he came to give us joy. Maybe tonight you've lost that joy. There's a lot of Christians lose their joy through disappointments, tragedies. Uh, you would not believe the stories that have been told over the country. Uh, some mother can't get over losing a child. or Some mother can't get over losing uh, her husband or some husband bitter at God because of something happened to his wife or uh, losing a job, uh, financial stress. and They get bitter on the Lord, you know, bitter on the Lord. I talked to a man not long ago. His teenage boy was killed in an automobile accident. He's been mad at God ever since. You know, just you would not believe. And if we don't stay close to the Lord, Stay in the word and walk within the Holy Spirit. You're going to lose your joy. And maybe some of you here tonight have lost it. But Jesus wants to give it back to you. I sure do love you. Be looking forward to being with you in the morning. Would you bow with me in closing tonight? Just maybe there's someone here and you've never truly, truly been born again. We must have a new birth starting all over with Jesus. And it's strange. It's not something mechanical. It's something in the Spirit of God. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, 
but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. Maybe tonight, if you feel the Holy Spirit, would you invite Jesus to come into your heart? Maybe you're a born again child of God and you just lost the joy. Would you come back to Jesus tonight? Ask Him to renew your strength, to restore the joy of your salvation. So, our Father in heaven, it's been a great honor to stand tonight to sing the songs of Zion to proclaim just a small portion of your word. We ask you to touch your people. We love them, and we pray your arms around everyone here tonight. Save those that are lost, we pray. And may we all go home tonight with the joy of Christ in our heart. Would you grant it, Lord, in the sweet name of Jesus, and for his sake, amen. Without him, I could do nothing. Do you know it? Would you stand? Without him, I truly fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Sing it, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Jesus, my Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Hallelujah to God. You've been blessed tonight. Give the Lord another hand of praise. Turn the lights on, Ben. Hallelujah to God. Y'all stop by the tables on the way out. Visit with the Robertsons a minute. Buy some of their products back there. And tell everybody you know about tomorrow morning. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on it right now before we go. Father, in Jesus' name, we're looking for you to anoint tomorrow's service. Give us a great turnout, God. Give us great weather for it. Pour out of your spirit upon it. Give us a great day outside and inside. Bless our eating, meeting after service tomorrow, God. We're going to enjoy uh, feeding the flesh a little bit after service tomorrow. And so, God, we pray that you anoint it, use it for your glory. And fill this place tomorrow, God, with people who need Jesus. We'll praise you and give you the glory in his precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. It's 1030 in the morning. Coffee and donuts at 10. See you then.